After taking some nice photos and enjoying the view, you realize that it's probably time to get back to work. There's plenty of work to do in this final fight, so put on your hard hat. Team composition is flexible. A nice mix of team buffs and debuffs in the form of Well of Radiance, Weapons of Light, Shadow Shot, and whatever else you can conjure will be great, along with some ad slaying supers if you're having trouble. Weapon wise, again, Izanagi's Burden and an auto reloading grenade launcher like Wendigo are great for boss damage, while your middle slot can be your workhorse Vex killing weapon. You'll see some clips of myself using Risk Runner in this video. Those clips are from when the contest modifier was on and the damage we deal and receive are not representative of someone at the proper power level for this encounter, which is 940. Risk Runner was being used as a defensive option thanks to the arc shield perk on it. Before we start, the strategy you'll see in this video is the one that my team uses and works for us. There's an alternate strategy I'll mention later on in the video. This fight combines the tether mechanic, the enlightened mechanic, and the moat mechanic all into one fight. But first, let's talk about the boss and the arena that you'll be fighting in. The arena is a semicircle around the boss, with two islands off to the sides, one on each side. The left side of the arena should be considered the light side, or the blue side, while the right side is the dark side, or red side. Both sides will each have a relay that needs 30 motes in order to fully charge up. We'll talk about where to get motes in a moment. Each relay also has a tether box above it. You'll also see a lot of those plus signs from the first and second encounter. These will be used for another mechanic, which we'll talk about right now. The boss will be shooting at you constantly during the encounter. The boss will also periodically use an attack that slams a section of the semicircle arena, killing players in that section and also making that section disappear from the arena. This mechanic happens whenever you destroy a weak spot on the boss, which we'll talk about next. The plus sign nodes scattered around the arena are linked to these sections of the map, and tethering to them will repair that section of the map. This will be very important as the fight goes on, as you'll have to flex between killing Vex and rebuilding plates. Vex will be attempting to sacrifice themselves on the relays, and any that do sacrifice will take away motes from your bank and you'll need to go get more. They'll also get shields later on that need the enlightened buff to be destroyed. So we need moats, where do you get them? The boss has two weak spots on its body, one on its shoulder and the other on its leg. When you destroy a weak spot on the boss, the following things happen. One, a portal will spawn near the boss depending on which spot you destroyed. Two, a cyclops will spawn on the corresponding sides far side pillar, and three, anyone on the island of the corresponding weak spot will be teleported back to the main arena. The leg will spawn a blue portal for the light side, the shoulder a red portal for the dark side. Players assigned to the light or left side should utilize the blue portal and the dark side, the red. When you go through the portal, you'll be teleported away to an island which spawns a bunch of Vex enemies. This could be a bunch of harpies or goblins, and then as you progress, you'll see either hobgoblins and harpies, or goblins and a minotaur. Killing an enemy drops a moat, with hobs and minotaurs dropping three, and you can hold up to ten just like before. You can potentially help your teammates with moat collecting by killing Vex and then leaving moats on the ground after you have ten. If your teammate teleports to the island fast enough and spawns on the correct side, they'll start with some free moats. So after you have 10 motes, you can't get any more, and you need to be brought back. The weak spots on the boss will regenerate after a brief time, and destroying them again will bring back the players on the island. Killing the shoulder brings back people from the dark island, and the leg, the light island. Again, it will spawn another cyclops and another portal. Players with motes should bank their motes in the relay to get the enlightened buff, which will be desperately needed in the main arena. This is the main loop of the fight. Players will be rotating in and out of islands, killing goblins and cyclops, repairing their plates, and defending their relays until both are completely full. The game will tell you with a message when your relay is full. Here's an example of a full rotation of one player. 
Never mind, I got it. I got it. You got it. Oh, my Cyclops right. Sorry. I'm not used to doing Cyclops. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Pick and pull. What is still not there? Up. One over here, too. Ah, oh, whatever. Yeah, that's what I have 10. Good to go. I can't kill my okay. Cyclops out of my ammo. And then we'll deposit and. I pop. got your help. Contacting this server is what? Uh, right side, uh, right side Cyclops needs to be killed, by the way. I can. I'll get it out there, I think. I got it. Okay. Now oh, we got a rebuild. Kicks. Mm -hmm. yeah. As soon as we can, yeah. Alright. Hold up. This guy is cool, cool as fuck. I'm good to go. I'm good to go on my side. I'm left. Alright, I'm Hold gonna up. bank. Ah, <clears throat> uh, we don't get it. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, okay. Uh, you can pull data oh, whenever. Can you break left? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can. Back. Uh, Cyclops coming in on right. Oh, the thing's so oh, I got left far. Cyclops. Right, well, so, CC, in, in rotation, this is where you would go back in. But right now, it's oh. you're going to miss the portal. So, just wait for the next one. Yeah, I'm missing okay. the portal. I need to do one more. So, like, right. when we go, it's us. Then Dad will go. Split your team into groups of three. Three light and three dark. When the fight starts, you'll have an angelic spawn in which blocks all tether boxes and end nodes. Just kill it. My team will usually wait for another wave of goblins to spawn in first before destroying weak spots, but you can go right away if you want to. Player one will sprint and jump to the portal near the boss when the weak spot is destroyed. Note that you don't have a lot of time to get to this portal. It's only open for a few seconds before it closes. Players two and three will stay behind to kill goblins their Cyclops, and to make any repairs that they need to make. Once player one has 10 moats, they should ask to be teleported out. The weak spot will be destroyed again, player two will head into the portal as player one is teleported back to the main arena and dunks their moats. You'll kill the Cyclops, the goblins, you'll make repairs, then destroy the weak spot to send in player three, player two comes out, dunks their moats, etc. This cycle will repeat until both sides have 30 moats in their bank, but if you take too long, the next phase will start regardless of your moat status. Again, you'll see a message pop up that says if you've deposited the number of moats needed to activate the relay. Note that it only takes one moat to be deposited to get the enlightened buff, so if you need to pull someone from the island before they get 10 so that Vex don't sacrifice themselves, that's fine, just pull them but you will have to get more moats to make sure you have 30. There's another strategy used where instead of sending in one person on both sides at the same time, you send in two people to one side and complete each relay one at a time. Two people go into the same portal, grab 15 moats between the two players, come out, while two more people are sent into the same portal, grab another 15, and then complete the relay, and then you do that on the opposite side. This leaves four people on the main island to help kill adds and rebuild plates. The next phase is the boss damage phase. A new angelic will spawn in which should be killed, along with a wave of goblins that should also be killed. This will unlock the tether boxes. The boss will either have a red or blue plus sign displayed in front of it during this entire time. If the plus is blue, then the light side needs to chain their tether box to the plus sign. If it's red, then the dark side does it. Most of the time, this can be done using only three people, so the three light side players should chain their box to the boss to start the damage phase. But you should assign a fourth player for both sides as a precaution in case there's a problem. This fourth player should be the final person in the chain. You should also coordinate an order ahead of time for the tether. For example, player one is always closest to the tether box, player two is in the middle, and player three is the farthest. After tethering to the boss the first time, the opposite side will have to tether shortly after as well. The plus sign will always be blue on the second time as of this video. I don't know if this is a visual bug or what, but regardless, the opposite side will do their tether second. Except this tether needs to be done in about 5 seconds, otherwise it won't work and your damage phase will be over. One huge note. If your relay did not have enough moats deposited into it, your tether box will work, but it won't make the boss vulnerable, and this tends to be a wipe unless you can somehow quickly scramble for more moats. So, what needs to happen is as soon as you know which team is going first, the opposite team should start setting up as soon as the first node is broken. This way, when the next plus sign node pops up, it will instantly break 
and you can really start your damage phase. Here's an example of that in action. Kill yeah, Angelica, kill yeah. Angelica. Kill yeah, so, so this you have a lot of time. So All CC, right. they're going first. CC, you're gonna be our base, so you're gonna be one. Sneak's gonna be I'm two, I'm here. gonna be three. Yeah. Are you guys ready? All right, yep, change. Mm -hmm. Gigs over here. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll drop it. Uh, so so left side like should be killing way. ads right now. Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple Ooh, goblins over by me. Okay, okay. So that was DPS. it. Yeah, now oh, yeah. it's DPS time. I'm dropping a ward on the right side. Whatever side does their tether first is the side that you should try to set up damage on. This is to prevent people from getting too close to the opposite side when they're trying to coordinate their tether order. People jumping into and out of a tether chain will absolutely cause problems and missed DPS phases because of how long it can take a tether to reapply and reorganize. Again, you only have a very brief window for the second node. If you are the second team, damage is not your priority here. If you miss a timing, this phase is over and you start from the top. If you hit the timing, you'll be given a lot of extra time to deal damage, and then you'll start from the top. You should use the time in between the damage phase ending and a new angelic spawning to repair any plates that you can, even ones that you aren't using very much. You'll mainly be using the four plates closest to the boss. This fight involves making on-the-fly calls and being able to adapt to a situation as it's happening. Repairing plates whenever you get a window to do so is very important as losing too much ground can cause the fight to spiral out of control. Making sure not to interfere with tethers is vital to a smooth damage phase setup. Cyclops dying before they can shoot is ideal because they will absolutely cause deaths. And that is Garden of Salvation. When the boss is defeated, you'll grab your loot and you're done. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.